Welcome back, Achievers, to your Easy Achievers Gaming Podcast. I am one of your hosts, the guy who needs a haircut, Elijah. Is that how you're feeling Sitting right now? Across. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. We've definitely hit the mark of, <laughs> I need a haircut. <laughs> I thought you just I need a haircut. And I... uh, no, no, it was a while ago. No, did um, I style it. Rebecca do the thing, or she, she didn't oh, cut it completely? Oh, I see. No, yeah. So okay, yeah. So I did let my girlfriend cut my hair. Um, it wasn't like a cut per se, more of uh, a strategic edging. edging. Yeah, yeah. I gotcha, yeah, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, she just took out the hair around my ears. Gotcha. And you know, you know the scruff that's in the back of the neck. Yeah, yeah, that scruff. That's not really. It's not really attached to the hair, but it's not really back hair either. No, it just it's, it's in that it's middle gross. ground. It's gross feeling. Yeah. You, I killed that. She killed that. Okay. Boy. Okay. That's good. That's good. Uh, so that's really it. But it, it's getting close to where I'm gonna have to go on Amazon, purchase the set, and be like, "You have to do something." <laughs> mm, I gotcha. And it, I, it's gonna be an emergency aid mission <laughs> that I'm going to need to affront. Um, and it's sitting across for me virtually. Is Alex? Hello, everyone. How are you? I am. I am. Do you need a haircut? No. 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 I'm. I'm actually letting my hair grow back out. Oh, okay. Into yeah. the my long moss like uh texture it usually gets. What? <laughs> <laughs> you know you know, like you know long moss. I I guess it's curly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Just like that. There's yeah. real long hair. Yeah. Check us out every Friday over on the podcast service of your choosing and YouTube for free. If you like to give us money, we'll not turn you down. We'll can head over to patreon.com slash easy achievers. You can give us a buck, helps us out, keeps the mics on, the lights on, and Alex's dogs fed. More importantly, that gives you access every month to an exclusive episode that we record every single month randomly. There's nothing set there, but you always get one. And you can post your questions, comments, concerns straight onto the patreon.com. We'll always see it and then we'll read it on the show. You can also scream at us if you want to. Go to our socials at EVM9000 at Creepy Stuff Skater. Alex, we got a little bit of a semi-busy news week. There's one huge, one huge, huge news, a little bit sprinkling of other things. Yeah. But before we get into that, Alex, hmm. what have you been playing? I have been playing, which surprisingly, because when I first tried this game out, I did not care for it. I am playing Persona 5 Royal. Oh! What do you think? I'm enjoying it. What? What? What made you play it this time? So, literally, I mean, I just, I, 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 talk, I gave myself a, my own, like a talk. You know, I went in my head and, <laughs> you know, I do the, you Alex, went to a mirror, I do the, I do the Alex thing. The and I was like, you know, I tried this game. Why didn't I like it? I loved four. I got, it got hard. I mean, and I quit. Um, but I really enjoyed the story. And I was like, you know, I'm, I, I like those type of games. So let me try five the first time couldn't get into it i guess maybe there was a lot of things coming out i don't know remember the time i just couldn't get into it maybe but then i tried it again and i just it, it stuck so now i'm having fun with it so you're enjoying your time yes i am that's good i am also playing persona 5 royal and oh boy i'm i'm it's it's all bringing me back oh yeah i beat it over the course of a full year mm-hmm. <laughs> yes this is like a 110 hour game i think is what mm-hmm. my final game clock was so it took me a while but over a course of a full year i beat the game and had mm-hmm. a great time of course yeah. that is on and off playing stopping for a few months coming back playing yeah. it but it was good yeah and i'm assumingly we'll do the same with this game it's Play crazy it on and off from it. yeah and it's crazy because i'm already 23 hours in yeah, yeah. I, I and I don't think that's 100 percent right. I'm pretty sure you probably left it on. I think yeah, I I think I'm at maybe twelve. I'm at 14 for context and I'm further than you are. Oh, I I I have I think mine I have to be at least 18 normally because yeah, I know I've been playing right. I've been running around the whole city and doing just random yeah. stuff for like a couple hours. So yeah. mine's pretty much legit. I think I feel like it's just maybe 3 to 5 hours off. Okay, that sounds that sounds fair. Yeah, that sounds fair. But yeah, I I'm in the if for people who know in the second palace, uh, enjoying my time. The differences yeah. are slowly popping out here and there, and I and 
every new thing that's been added I like so far, mm. uh, especially with the Persona traits, if you know what that is. That is that's really cool. Another aspect of the game, another little combat. Also, we got the I got the Persona bundle, which is real nice. Getting mm-hmm. these super strong people, you can just oh, blow God. through the game if yeah, you want to. They would just yeah. help so much. Yeah, it, it, you can literally get a level ninety character and one hit everything, and just not even worry about it. If you'd yep. like to, if you like challenge, of course, you don't have to do that. That's exactly but, what I'm doing. So yeah, it's it's fun because there's one character literally. You could do it. You could do a, a, a full kill move every single time. Yep. And just keep doing that throughout the whole game, and you will probably never have an issue. Nope. Yep. So, so if you far, want to play that way, option is there. It does cost fifty dollars if you want to do that. So yeah. you you have to buy that. Um, what else have we played? More more Apex, more Warzone. Yep. We're playing the new event today. Yes, which we I'm are. excited about. Yeah, same. The old ways. I don't think it's too crazy different. No, um, I think it's I've just more stuff for Bloodhound and things like that, and I can scan yeah, some co- cosmetics. Yeah, yeah, there's um, they're adding duos permanently. Yes, which they is nice. they did. I I did pop on there to check the menus, and the menus did change a little bit. So now, like when you hit where you know how it says it'll say at the bottom left, it'll say play Apex, or let's say if there was an event, it'll, you can play how the last one was Deja Vu. You hit that one, and it's kind of yeah. like it's like left to right. Now there's yeah. like um, you know how Windows 10 pops up and on the bottom left, and it yeah. comes up straight up that's how it kind of is a little bit no one can ever forget windows 10 (laughs) that's how it is a little bit now so like now it shows it says duos and i think it says trios Uh uh-huh so and then it's like it's like um the thing is not from left to right anymore it's kind of like at the top uh from bottom down so it i like the design it looks cool got it yeah i'm excited to try it we'll try that tonight and we'll be back next week for our impressions. I don't think anything else has been somewhat new. I'm anticipating Final Fantasy VII. We have some mm, reviews. So we'll three more days. Later. Yep, yep. I'm excited for that. Is it kills me? Did it? You know, it kills me because I really thought it was the ninth today, and I thought t- the tenth was tomorrow, and I was oh, so excited. You're like excited about to play it because yep. technically it's Tuesday. More commonly, the games released today, but yeah, you know, yeah, they had to opt for a Friday. Yeah, I thought it was today. I thought today was the eighth or ninth, and I looked at the date. It's the seventh, and I'm like. Mm. <sighs> okay. Couple couple more days of waiting. I guess it gives me a couple more days to play Persona because I'm literally no life in this game. There you go. You can just keep playing a Japanese yep. student until yep. you uh, until you're eventually done. It's it's weird mm. because that's what the type of animes that I enjoy as well. Me watching somebody go to school and there see his problems. Don't know yeah, why. You, have, you probably have issues. I don't I don't know. We hey man, who, maybe I want to go back to high school and screw the adult there life. Go. There you go. You can go back to. High school and have these classes all the time. And see, time. I've had I, that. I, I, I had. I've had that question asked me to before, like, and I would take it. Would you rather do high school all over again and I have to worry about any paychecks or any, or not paychecks, but like you know bills or anything? And I would be like, yes, mm-hmm. I would do it again. I would. I would. I would. Fuck school. And see, I, I love wouldn't school. mind. The I don't like parts. Fun. It's yeah. everything else. It's not fun. And see, I don't. I, I never worried about all that stuff. I don't care about the drama. <laughs> Essentially, the school is uh, is daycare. It's just eight hours of daycare. Yeah, yeah. You is. learn that in college because in college you have a fifty-hour class, mm-hmm. and you realize, oh, we can really condense this stuff, and we just choose not to. Yeah. Anyways, moving on. We have we've got a big deal, Alex. Today on a random Tuesday afternoon, Sony's PR and marketing decided to release the controller and what it looks like. Alex, we're going over to literally anywhere you want to find out details, <laughs> um, but we're going to go to the PlayStation blog um, for their full roundup of what this means. Yeah. Um, let me bring that up because I... So the thing the with the controller, thing. like, why do you think they just randomly showed it? <sighs> they're probably getting flack for not releasing things, right? I Something. assume so. Yeah. This is probably, I assume there is a reason for releasing this on, again, a random Tuesday that uh, has nothing else going on, and they didn't yeah. announce anything else. So they just decided to show what the controller looks like, which, to be fair, is what Xbox did, kind of. They just kind of showed up at the Game Awards and said, hey, this is what our system looks like, and bowed out. Yep. But literally, but I do, Game Awards. I feel this like is like a random it's Tuesday, from the pressure. Said. I feel like it's a little bit of the pressure. Like, uh, we should probably show something because people keep screaming at us. Maybe it was because they got so uh, disheartened from the news that uh, they, they got from the, uh, the other day. 
So they had to give something, you know, to bring hope. Can you uh, give context to that? So the what I'm talking about is The Last of Us 2 gets delayed indefinitely. Oh! Yeah, so if you want... Kotaku yeah. over there. Yep. And also from PlayStation on their Twitter. Update, SIE, Sony Interactive Entertainment, has made the difficult decision to delay the launch of The Last of Us Part 2 and Marvel's Iron Man VR until further notice. Logistically, the global crisis is burning us from providing the launch experience our players deserve. I am upset. Not we are delaying the game to X date. No. We are delaying indefinitely the game. Terrifying news, Alex. No, yeah, and it is crazy because they said the game is done, but they don't want to release it to the public. Yep, makes sense, right? Because you can't. Uh, effect, and we're seeing this with uh, Square Enix. No, for sure. Um, they're terrified that they're not going to be able to get it to people. So they're yeah. just like, eh. eh. And yeah. they can't just... Because f- originally when I heard this, I was like, just release it digitally. And Did you see that... Serve, and then you sh- you ship it to the people who can get it. Did but you see that the digital ones, uh, the ones who pre-purchased it digitally are getting refunds? Automatic refunds? Yeah, if they want it, I'm sure. I don't know. I just uh, like I, oh God. I had I should have looked up this article, but I like I was reading it's it earlier. If, I'm I pretty it sure it's if you choose to get a refund, they will give hmm. it to you. They're not just going to give you the free game. So if if you choose to re- refund it, they will they will refund it for you. Yeah, but you won't get the game, of course. You are refunding the purchase. No, no, yeah, yeah. You're getting the money back for because the, they don't know when they're going to release it. Yeah, they're like question mark basically. Yep. But that's terrifying. We're not getting these games. Um, the coronavirus continues to com- completely change how we live. Yep. Uh, and it's terrifying. But. And it's getting worse. We can talk about the new PlayStation 5 controller. <laughs> yep. Yes, we can. <laughs> Introducing DualSense, the new wireless game controller for PlayStation 5. Again, this is on the PlayStation blog. We've reached an exciting milestone with PlayStation 5. As we're starting to ship our new controller and its founder design to the developer store, implementing its unique features into their games. But first, we want to everyone in the PlayStation community to get a first look at DualSense wireless controller. And here our vision for how the new controller will captivate more of your senses as you interact with the virtual worlds in PS5 games. The features of DualSense along with PS5's Tempest 3D audio tech will deliver a new feeling of immersion to players. When PS4 launched in 2013, the DualShock 4 wireless controller garnered a lot of positive feedback for gamers and developers for being the best PlayStation controller yet. If you're interested in forward-looking features like the share button, this brought us to the next question. How do we build upon that success? And after thoughtful consideration, we decided to keep much of the gamers' uh, love about DualShock 4 intact while also adding new functionality and redefining the design. Based on our discussions with developers, we conclude that the sense of touch within gameplay, much like audio, has been a big focus for many games. We have a great opportunity with PS5 to innovate by offering game creators the ability to explore how they can heighten the feeling of immersion through our new controller. So when they go into more of this, you can read the full thing, of course, on PlayStation Blog. But they're going into haptic feedback. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, essentially, uh, yeah, we're we are also incorporating active, uh, adaptive triggers into L2 and R2 buttons for DualSense, so you can truly feel the tension of your actions, like when drawing a bow to shoot an arrow. That's so cool. of course, as you pull the trigger, it will get tighter and tighter until you have full, read the full string, and then you release it. That's pretty cool. Which is cool. Yeah, that's cool. I'm I'm curious on what they mean by other things, right? Uh, somewhere here, pop, 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 pop. for the buttons, we'll notice there is no longer a share button as we had the DualShock Four. Don't worry, it's not going away. If I could build upon the excess of the industry first share button to bring you a new create button, with create we're once pioneering new ways to players create epic gameplay content, share with the world, and enjoy for themselves. We'll have more details on that feature as we get closer to launch. And then DualSense also adds a built-in microphone array, which will enable players to easily chat with friends without a headset. Ideal for jumping into a quick conversation. But of course, you are playing to chat for a long period. It's good to have that headset handy. Hmm. And then they, of course, go into colors. Let's talk colors. You just see our base controllers have a single color. As you can see, we have went different direction. Side on two tones, white and black. Additionally, we change the position of the light bar. That will give an extra pop. On DualShock 4, it's that on top. Now it sits on each side of the touch pad, giving it a slightly larger look and feel. Whew! That is basically everything I wanted to get it to. The speaker is the most interesting. Of course, it yeah. remains a speaker, and also you can chat into it. 
Um, it looks like it has a few options on the controller. There is a big PlayStation button that comes out between the offset, uh, sorry, the um, onset triggers. And uh, the, that looks like it's going to power it on. And underneath is a button that looks like a, a mute button for the microphone. So you can mute yourself if you don't want to talk to people through it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I, Alex, I, what do you think about this controller? So I like it. But so I like the colors. I like the design of okay. the light bars. I'm okay. iffy on how it's going to feel. So it does look different. It looks it, like it looks too much like a. Oh god, um, it's too squared out right there, and I don't know if they're trying to get go towards because you know Xbox and Switch kind of have that more of a squared roundish feel instead of how PlayStation's always done to where the inside and middle where the analog sticks are are more. Yeah, they're, they're like this is more squared out. So I'm wondering how that's gonna feel. I'm hoping it feels a lot better, but. I'm assuming it will feel better. It does not look more comfortable, though. Yeah, that's um, what I, that's what I'm concerned. I will assume they're not doing anything dumb with their controller. I assume this is going to be yeah. a little bit better. Um, and as you can see, that PlayStation uh, con- uh, design on it does pop out a tiny bit, so it is a button. Yeah. Um, of course, it is USB-C. Um, the triggers don't look triggery enough for me, personally. Uh, I know mm-hmm. that's weird, but I do like the... They look the exact same as the PS4 okay. triggers, to be honest. Yeah, they do look the exact same. The bumpers same. Like look a little Xbox. different. They're a little thicker, it looks like, but the triggers look the same. Yeah. Of course, we're Xbox guys, so we do prefer the Xbox controller. But this does look nice. Mm. I have been indifferent about this design all day. I did yeah. um, find out this design uh, a very Elijah way on in route to a Taco Bell. Um, I was getting some Taco Bell, and I pop, popped up on Twitter and noticed that, yeah, this was announced. <laughs> and yeah. looked at it, I was like, What? Um, and this is uh this is a controller. I don't, I don't hate it. Yeah. I don't think I love it either. Um, if that makes sense, mm. I need to hold this. Yeah, that's how I feel. You know what I mean? I need to hold this thing because I think I like the color scheme. I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, like, I can't tell. I'm I'm I'm. Mm. I'm. You know what this controller looks like? I'm Alex? seventy thirty. So this seventy would this- like it. This looks like if I typed in PS5. Concepts. Without, thank you. Yes. Like someone made this up. Like yeah. it, it, it looks like that to me. It does look futuristic though. Yeah, it does. Which I guess is a good thing. And I don't know why, but I for some reason I keep – I like the light bars on the edges and the front instead of the – I do too. Just because, I mean, what was the point of ever having it on the other side to where you couldn't see it? I mean, like, I know that it was for, you know, let's say you're playing a certain game, like, for example, yeah, Infamous for, like, Second Son. Controls. Yeah, for motion, sh- uh, for motion stuff. But, like, now, at least now I can actually see it, and I kind of Yeah, enjoy well, it. I, Brian Otano has messed me up. He's a, a IGN uh, host, and he said it, he once he saw it as overalls, he cannot see it anymore. <laughs> and now I can't not see them as overalls. <laughs> that's, that's pretty funny. I can't stop looking at it and looking at it over else. But it, Alex, it, am I being unfair? This does this not look like a refurbished controller? Doesn't this kind of look like two <laughs> controllers put together? It it does uh, it does it looks like it, okay. I want to make like, sure I'm not crazy. I'm not trying to yeah. be unfair here. It just it looks like I, I'm. It looks like something half Nico of my controller broke and, made. I, and, and I had to put it together. It looks like something Nico would have made. Because you know they make yeah. some weird controllers sometimes. Yeah, yeah, it does. I, I don't, but uh, again, I don't hate it. It's just, it's going to grow on me. I'm sure I'm going to actually get the controller and love it. Mm-hmm. But right now, I'm like, what is that? <laughs> I like and that also, they finally got, uh, the, the buttons are clear. Uh, I w- Yeah, I guess. I would like it better if they were colored just because I'm a weirdo. Um, but yeah, yeah uh, it is. it does look sleek and it does look nice. Um, I would like to point out, this is a weird insider thingy but they, these are not called dual shocks anymore nope they've dual been called sense. dual shocks ever since the playstation's been a thing and now there are dual sense so they're not dual shocks anymore yep. alex what how much does a dual sense cost what do you think mm, like like i just need an controller? extra controller for my i need an extra controller for my ps5 i'm gonna go to gamestop i'm gonna order it on amazon whatever how much does one cost um 70 to think? 80 70 80 yeah, because the normal is one is 65 bucks. I don't no. know why. 
no, no. But no, I do no. not think this is going to be 60. I do think this will be 70. Well, isn't a normal controller a 60 or is it 65? A plain black is 60 uh -huh. without a sale. And then anything with a design on it is 65. So like this standard one, this would, I'm assuming this is the standard one. This would be about 70 to 75. And then the colored ones would be at around 80 to 85. I do think it's 70. 85 would be way too much. I don't think they can do that. I think 70. Do you think 70 um, is the highest? If they say it's 80, people go, no. <laughs> people go, go fuck yourself, basically. Nah, um, yeah, maybe. If it's 80, hey, more power to you. That's how much Joy-Cons cause, and people That's how much happily joy, yeah. buy that. Yeah, yeah. Happily. Trust yep. me, I know. They happily buy that. <laughs> they yep. don't care. Uh, so, hey, it's not unheard of. And people are killing each other for Switches right now. And um, I'm wondering, so nowhere to be found. Um, the design looks very yeah. much like a VR sense ty uh, style because the VR is white. It has this, you know, this sleek design in my and right. I'm wondering if you know if they're coming up with a new VR, and I'm wondering if the new system is going to be fully white. That's a good question, man. What is the system's color scheme? Because if they're going offset colors. Then are we getting an offset system? Is it going to be black and white? You assume so because you don't have a controller that's black and white, and the other one be something different, right? Yeah, because I assume the systems have always the systems have always been like like standard one would been black, and you know a special edition white one comes out. I think the standard uh -huh. one is going to be white with the blue lighting, of of course, and then the black uh, like maybe like underlying like like some parts will be black. I'm thinking we're getting the same thing with this, where it's top's white, bottom's black. Yeah, and it's just gonna same 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 route as the uh, as this controller. What if we get the pizza oven? <sighs> we're not getting the pizza oven. I promise. I will. <laughs> I I will give everyone who listens to this podcast twenty bucks if we get the pizza oven. Mm. That's how positive I am. Mm. And what everyone who listens to this, if I'm right, you have to give me a dollar on patreoncom slash <laughs> <laughs> Uh But we're not getting pizza oven. If you don't know what pizza oven is, just look up PlayStation Five Dev Kit and try not to vomit. <laughs> Moving on. It's funny because I've seen a I've seen a meme and somebody put an actual uh -huh. slice of pizza in the middle of the Dev Kit. <laughs> I've seen it too. I've seen it too. <laughs> Moving on. There was an inside Xbox today. How oh, was there? Um, and, and, and yeah, the little news thing, nothing crazy. We didn't get yeah. anything, you know, nuts out of it like we did with the PlayStation 5 controller. Um, but we did get a little bit of details. I'm going to go over to Xbox.com for the news here. Um, so we're going to go uh, first starting off with Obsidian Entertainment. Announced upcoming survival adventure game Grounded. This was previously announced. Uh, they're just announcing that it's coming to early access on Game Pass Ultimate and Steam on July 28th. As part of today's announcement, the team also revealed that a brand new trailer focused on the single player experience for Grounded. The first ever li excuse me, live stream with the Studio Entertainment's game director Adam Brennick and social media manager Sheila Schofield, who gave a closer look at the game. And you can, of course, look at all of this on the actual um, post on Xbox.com. And then a closer look at Xbox Series X technologies. Not much here, to be frank, uh, frankly, uh, frank with everybody. Um, they just really talked about uh, a little bit extra on what Series X uh, uh, graphically will go through with their ray tracing and some of their variable rate shading too um, with their audio. Uh, quick resume and storage was, a, and they also made sure that you knew that you had to uh, to run the games. You have to have it internally in your SSD or a uh, compatible SSD hooked up, which is the memory cards that you will have to purchase. So they reinforced that. And then they talked about the Xbox Velocity architecture um, and how uh, and what entails for extra games. And then they talked about Xbox Game Bar, the customizable gaming overlay built into Windows 10s for PC. Starting today, insiders will have access to apps from partners like Razer, XSplit, and Intel directly from Xbox Game Bar through new widgets. No more having the alt tab to separate apps while gaming. We've seen incredible interest from PC gaming partners in this fan request a feature, and we look forward to growing number of available widgets. So you can get that if you're into Game Bar, I guess. Announcing more great titles for Game Pass. This is everything that I've seen. So far, starting on Xbox Game Pass console, uh, they re-announced Nier Automata Become His Gods. Uh, totally reliable delivery service is available now. Coming soon is Alvastia Chronicles and Journey to the Savage Planet. That is on April 9th for consoles. And then for PC on Xbox Game Pass, Overcooked 2, fabulous game I love to play. Uh, it is so fun. You can play with um, a significant other or a friend. Uh, Football Manager 2020 is coming soon. Um, Elvestia Chronicles is also coming soon. Mist Over 
And Stranger Things 3, the game, is also coming to Xbox Game Pass for PC. Nice. Of course, to me- make sure you mention, uh, if you have Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, you do also have Game Pass for PC. Just as a, as a PSA for everybody. A uh, Project X Cloud. Yeah, this is yeah, a lot of stuff. I, I'm liking that. You want to stop here real quick and uh, talk about this, but I, I like it. Um, I'm excited for Journey to the Savage Planet. It's really, honestly. Every time I hear that, I, I always really want to say Journey to the Center of the Earth. Yeah, that's basically what the game is, right? <laughs> I've heard good stuff, though. Yeah. I want. I do want to play it, and I might try out the Stranger Things game, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I played the first one when that game came out. I haven't tried uh-huh. the second one, and the third one seems cool, so. Yeah. Uh, Project X Cloud Preview adds more great games from EA. We've added even more titles to Price Judging X Cloud Preview beginning today. Participants can play three more great games from EA on their Android phones or tablets, including The Sims 4, Unravel 2, and Dragon Age Inquisition Hala. Additionally, this morning, we announced that Project X Cloud Preview will be heading to 11 new countries across Western Europe. If you're interested in joining the Xbox uh, Project X Cloud Preview, you can stream these great games. Please visit xbox.com slash projectxcloud. Then Forza Street races onto mobile on May 5th. Boo. Get your <laughs> engines ready. Forza Street is coming to your iOS and Android devices on May 5th. We've received incredible engagement from players during Android pre-registration. Are excited to let iOS gamers know they too will hit the streets in just a few weeks. For a limited time, we're also giving out the Founders Pack to anyone who plays Forza Street between May 5th and June 5th as a welcome gift. You can pre-register now on uh, Google Play and the Samsung Galaxy Store. Already did. Uh, are you excited for that? Is that something you're actually excited for? I'm well. I, I like Forza, so but I'm uh-huh. uh, I'm in. I want like I used to used to want to be a mobile guy. So like if I'm running around just chilling on my phone, I want to be able to play a game. But oh god, I wish I was a mobile guy. It's just I haven't found a game that's yeah. That's that my thing. Just me on mobile. Device. I did like Pokemon Go, and I yeah. still do like Pokemon Go. It's fun. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just I can't find myself to play a mobile game for long. Yeah, like the most the game that I most played on here, I I mean I've played Pokemon Go, I played Mario Kart, I played Sword Art game on here. I play, and I even tried Elder Scrolls Blades, and that one was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I want to be it's a good. mobile guy, but I just I can't never stick to it. I think it's if I had a controller, this would all this would erase everything I have. Some games are fine without a controller, of course, but some games mm. I need a controller. Yeah, yeah. Um, because it, it is some games like oh, it's like a console game. I'm like, well, I'm just gonna play it on a console though. <laughs> you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, yeah. Like I don't want a console game. I want a good mobile game. Yeah. Um, like Florence, that was an awesome game. Um, and uh, oh, and a Lost Phone was another game I loved. <laughs> um, uh, I think it's a normal Lost Phone. I think the game is called. Mm. That's really good. Um, moving on. Breaking down five things you need to know about Gears Tactics, a game I'm very excited about personally. Today, the Coalition celebrated Gears Tactics going gold with a new video highlighting five badass things you need to know before launch and then commitment to gameplay experience tailored to PC, including new details on a partnership with... Available April 28th on Windows 10 PC, Steam, and Game Pass for PC. Gears Tactics has players assume the role of Gabriel Gabe Diaz as he recruits, equips, and commands his squad on a mission to hunt down the ruthless leader of the Locust Army, Ukun. For more on Gears Tactics, including the latest design collaboration with the acclaimed artist Luke Priest, you can go over to the uh, Xbox.com. And then set sails with Sea of Thieves, free ships of Fortune update. Prospective Pirates got a look at new Sea of Thieves uh, ships of Fortune update arriving later this month. Ships of Fortune adds new depth to the game's trading companies, allowing players the option to re- represent their favorite trading companies as emissaries for booster rewards and exclusive cosmic items. What's more, a new mysterious company known as the Reaper's Bones is also making their debut, tasking players with pillaging rival ships and taking their emissary flags and loot as treasure. That sounds cool. Yeah, it's crazy that they're still going crazy with that game. I'm good. I'm glad, right? And yeah, this is same. One of those same things that I'm happy to see. Yes, uh, I like to akin this to Rainbow Six Siege, mm. uh, a game I dabbled in, and then you leave and come back, and this entire community and different things have been added, and it's really exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, I see if these is one of the games I keep saying, and I'm pretty sure I've said it on here before that I want to go back to. Yep. I just can't go back alone, so I got to entice no, for sure. you or John or no, some I mean, other I'll go buddies back for sure. play with. I need to. I need to entice. I don't know what I need to do. Yeah. Maybe maybe make some bread. I, I don't. I don't know. Maybe I'll make bread. Yeah. For you. 
A new batch mm-hmm. of ID at Xbox Games is coming to Xbox One. In today's show, we look at a brand new game called The Last Campfire, which is made by the developer Hello Games, which were the people who made No Man's Sky, that combines a beautiful art style with a wide variety of puzzles to create a wholly unique experience. There was also a new trailer for Atomicrops, <laughs> an action-packed farming simulator where you must cultivate and defend the last farm in a post-apocalyptic wasteland. Finally, it was announced that the action-packed top-down shooter Hotline Miami Collection is not only coming to Xbox One, but is actually available right now. That's that's cool. Yeah, I loved Hotline Miami One. I need to play the second one. I have not. I have never actually played it. They're good. They're very um, uh, violent. Uh, mm. very violent but they're good though um yeah. it's a it's a top-down game where you have to uh kind of eliminate a house mm-hmm. uh, filled with people and you have to figure out different ways of hitting them um and you you can be seen but you can't really be seen you kind of want to sneak up on everybody oh, uh, gotcha, but gotcha. you can like use the door to hit people you can throw things you can use a bat or a gun or stuff like that but it's, it's really good i played like i said it's and it's super weird it's like a uh, it's like acid tripping, but if it was a game, mm-hmm. and it, 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 I I want to get this just to play two, and I might replay one again just because they're they're pretty short and you don't have to spend too much time on. Them. Yeah, hmm. I have to give it a try one day. That was everything on Inside Xbox, though, Alex. What, what did you think uh, overall? Sounds good. I mean, more content. I'm uh, yeah, yeah. I'm excited to try. I, I really like like you said. I really want to go back to Sea of Thieves because that we were enjoying that for so long, and it, it yeah, seems like it got better. Takeaway. But like I want to, I want to go back to it. We just we, just, we have yeah. no time. Yeah, yeah. We got Final Fantasy we coming. Did, up. Well, we did have time. Now we don't. Well, I mean, we're gonna have time after this month because now we don't have Last of Us. Yep. <laughs> we don't have Last of Us anymore. Well, so. to be fair, how long are we gonna play uh, Final Fantasy for? Uh, I've heard thirty hours. Is it thirty hours? Yeah, thirty hours. And it's still That's only what part game of the game. Were. Uh, yep. And we will get into what that means in the review roundup in one second. But first, Alex, let's get into grabbing some salt. I don't know if you guys Uh know this, but every uh, almost every week we have some random rumor to go through. And we make sure you want to grab a bucket of salt and consume as much as you possibly can to know that you should not (laughs) you should not believe everything on the Internet. But this might be true. Um, And this was a Resident Evil 8 report that leaked mm. um this has been around the twitter scapes and internet webs for a minute um but the main takeaway is summed up really well by nibel um at nibelian on twitter and the rumor rea is called resident evil village mm-hmm. chris to play a central role has been redesigned chris is the main character from resident evil 5 chris redfield yeah chris redfield resident evil 5 and 1 Okay. Um, and I think that's it. And he played some in six. Uh, there's a European setting, and there's weird elements uh, such as hallucinations, possible Resident Evil 4 style inventory UI, and it's planned for Q1 2021. That is a good, just kind of, that's mm-hmm. what you need to know. And of course, you can go in deeper, Google around, and see what you can find. Um, it's first person, just like Resident Evil 7. It's meant to be kind of more of a sequel to Resident Evil 8 if you play the, that game and notice the end Seven. of what happens. Yeah, yeah, Resident Evil. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm excited for it. I I, yeah, I really like I really like Biohazard, so I'm excited if they continue uh, with that type style because mm-hmm. I actually enjoyed that. Especially if they put it in VR, that's gonna be <laughs> that's gonna be scary as hell. Uh, I'm not playing that. <laughs> dude, I try I tried playing Biohazard on VR and I couldn't make it like an hour. Like, and I beat in the game. I beat the whole game, but like when I tried that VR to- mode, man, I just I couldn't do it. I don't really mess with the VR is too much. And see, I'm always on the VR man, but it just stresses me out when I get when I start. Even like um like the PlayStation VR demos, like they even have the kitchen demo for Resident Evil, and every time I do it, no matter how many times I play it, like it still freaks me out. It's it's pretty terrifying. I don't really like. It's crazy I how really played how how they can do it. I haven't really played a horror game on VR yet, um, mm-hmm. but I do respect my pants and underwear, so I don't really want yep. to. Uh, so I might that might be something I give a try later on when I get more used to VR. Yeah. Uh, but I'm not interested yet. There hasn't been a horror game I've heard I have to play yet. Um, I, uh, I, I think Resident Evil Seven got okay reviews, but I think mm. it got 
I think it makes some people motion sick. It probably make me motion sick too. Yeah. Well, it depends on like how much you're actually moving around and doing. Yeah, that's your, that's your yeah. Point. Yeah, because I've noticed uh, like with certain games, it like, gets too motion sickness if you if uh-huh. you move with the camera. But if you sit still and you only move your head, then you're fine. Oh, uh, that's a good point, I guess. Yeah, because I did that with uh, with Skyrim. I tried moving with it, so I kept moving my whole body left and right, and I was getting mm-hmm. I felt weirder, uh, like more sick in it instead of me just sitting there and only moving my head. You got it. Okay, so yeah. you can kind of make it a little better rather yeah. than like moving around your head trying to look at everything. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's move on to the Final Fantasy VII review roundup. So, this is over on GameSpot, and they always do really good roundups. Mm-hmm. Over on GameSpot, they gave it a 10 out of 10. My God. Regardless of your history with the original game, Final Fantasy VII Remake is a sounding achievement. The wait for its release was a long one, but in gameplay, story, characters, and music, it delivers. The wait was worth it for first time players. It's an opportunity to understand why Final Fantasy VII is held in such high regard. It's the chance to experience a multifaceted story that grapples with complex subject matter, but in the company of memorable characters and be moved by their plight. For returning fans, this isn't the Final Fantasy VII your mind remembers. It's the one your heart always knew it to be. Wow. Mm. Glowing review by by GameSpot. That was Tamar Hussain. So uh, their review rant. is going to tell me... So they're saying pretty much... So now you will, you'll understand why everybody is is so much in love with Sephiroth and Cloud. Uh yeah, seems to be. It seems to be that we if because you Because nobody would you shut up prior about prior knowledge. Too. It seems like you're fine. Yeah. I have no idea what goes on in that in that game. Like I've never played it. This which might be good. Yeah. We might be playing well, this. And, and like, oh, that, this is cool. Yeah. And that's why I'm so excited to play it uh, when it comes out because I've never played it. So it's like it's so it's so like new to me. So I'm like I'm surprised that I haven't even been spoiled for with anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been spoiled with some things. Really, just one thing, maybe oh, three. Yeah, I haven't spoiled with anything because I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't look. I, I try not to look for it. <laughs> uh, you have a hundred percent been spoiled by one thing. I know you have. Um, you're probably just not remembering right now. Hmm. But uh, I'll. Uh, we can talk about that later. I want to spoil one okay. just in case. Uh, even though it's a ten-year-old game, twenty-year-old game. Sorry. There's a lot to say about Final Fantasy VII remake. How it wasn't afraid to shake up the story in parts where it mattered or how it trusted its characters to hold up under increased screen time and scrutiny, how it's a game that will frustrate with difficulty, difficult boss mechanics or outdated minigame mechanics in an effort to preserve nostalgia or create a challenge, and how it preserves despite that through sheer charm. Above all, though, Final Fantasy VII is a picture-perfect return to Midgar. That's by Cody Gravel, again, over on screen right mm. And then a couple more from, uh, we'll go over Twinfinite, 4.5 out of 5. If you're willing to keep an open mind, you'll be able to enjoy Final Fantasy VII for what it is at its core. A gorgeous, well-made, and fun RPG that successfully retells one of the best video game stories ever told with a few twists. That's Ed, Ed McGlon. And then let's go to Destructoid. In the end, after thinking of some time and removing nostalgia from the equation entirely, I came to the conclusion that this world is full of powerful characters and is setting worth remembering. Remake or not, this is Chris Carter. Game Informer gave it an 8.75. So I'm trying to get more of like, you get some good, you get some bad ones. Yeah. Um, Badder, not bad. 8.75 is really high. This remake of a legendary RPG finds an impressive equilibrium between its past and present, crafting a distinct world and exciting a combat system that felt modern. And then one more, we're going to go to a US Gamer for a, a slightly lower one, 3.5 out of 5. Final Fantasy VII Remake sets out a fully reimagined, a classic RPG with improved combat and expanded story. Unfortunately, it's hurt by weak side quests and a surplus of padding, and its biggest change is bound to be controversial. It's one of the most coherent and enjoyable Final Fantasy releases in years, but it's also likely to be the one most divisive. It's Kate wow. Bailey. Interesting. I wonder what that is. Curious on what that one big of the, change the is. best ones in years, meaning is it better than 15, are they saying? Because yeah, yeah, 15 I mean, is really good. I'm assuming that's what that means, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, because I was just thinking to myself, I'm like, damn, I'm, I really, really enjoyed 15. And I even went back when they did the Royal Edition. When, no, I played a little bit. Not, I didn't play the whole thing again. But um, I'm wondering if they're even any, uh, like, if they're gonna make another one, like a, like, a, like another game like that one. So I'm just. Um, that's like, a good question. Like, six, I, like I mean, Final Fantasy 16 or whatever. Like, is it gonna be like 15, like open world, like how that was? 
you're assuming that they're going the route of two teams are working on different games. Yeah, I don't know how Square does so. their uh, studio layout. I don't know if everyone's focused on Final Fantasy VII because we did know that Kingdom Hearts Three was the main focus. Then people went to Final Fantasy VII Remake as mm. Kingdom Hearts III's development slowed down. So they could be working on just one game at a time. Hmm. Um, I assume they have concept and basic uh, pre-pro- pre-production ba- done on whatever the next Final Fantasy game is. Um, yeah. Obviously, they don't want a new Final Fantasy XV to happen. So obviously, they're showing caution in announcing a new game because usually they announce them pretty quickly. So yeah, they're they're definitely giving it time so they don't find themselves in a Final Fantasy 15 situation where we're waiting on the game for ten plus years. That's a good point. Which is which is good. Uh, I want to see that. I want I want a well crafted story that's not going to be all right. We're going to release. See you in seven years. Yep. There's something no. They get, they're taking their time, cause so by the meantime, they're going to be like, well, here's more Final Fantasy XIV uh, DLC. Mm-hmm. Yes, 100%. Uh, I, hopefully, seven is a meaty chunk where uh, it satisfies me until the next uh, Final Fantasy game, whatever that yeah. may be. Assuming, of course, by now, it's going to be on the next gen, so that's exciting. Yeah, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. They'll definitely be on next gen. Um, moving on, Alex. We have one more story I wanted to go over. Borderlands 3 developers are getting stiffed. This is over on Jason Schreier. The, big, the video game of Borderlands 3 was a big sales success when it launched last fall. According to Publisher 2K, who described it as a, quote, billion-dollar global brand, end quote. That's why it was shocking to employees at Gearbox. The developer game in the studio CEO, Randy Pitchford, told them yesterday that they would not receive a significant royalty bonus they expected. Employees at the studio will get small bonus checks, but nothing close to the tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands that many had expected. This account is based on conversations with six people close to Gearbox, all speaking anonymous because they were not authorized to talk about what happened. Some said it was crushing news that they upending their financial plans for the future. Then in a meeting yesterday, Gearbox boss Randy Pitcher told employees that Borderlands 3 bonus checks would be significantly lower than they hoped. According to three people who were present, he said the game had been more expensive than expected. A company had grown significantly larger than it had been in the past year and now operates a second studio in Quebec, Canada, and that their sales predictions had been off base. The game has been sold very well. Quote, we expect lifetime unit sales to be a record for the series, end quote, said Strauss Velnick, CEO of 2K partner company Take Two, on an earnest call in February. But it costs way too much to make. One large factor was a technology switch uh, midway through development from the Unreal Engine 3 to Unreal Engine 4, which added a great deal of time to the project. In addition, before Gearbox could receive any royalties from the publisher 2K, Borderlands 3 would have recouped not just the game's entire budget around $95 million, but also the budget for all of the downloadable content for some closer to $140 million, thanks to a contract to companies that sign. Pitcher also told Gearbox developers that if they weren't happy with the royalty system, they were welcome to quit. <laughs> According to those who were in the meeting, he did not attribute the diminished bonuses to the coronavirus pandemic, which has led to economic uncertainty and pay cuts in many other fields. He did say that he had hoped to get more money to employees as an advance from 2K on future royalties. When asked for comment, Gearbox sent over the following statement to Kotaku. Borderlands 3 represents an incredible value to gamers and incredible achievement by the team at Gearbox Software. Our studio is talented, and we believe strongly in everyone sharing in profitability. The talent at Gearbox enjoys participation in the upside of our games. To our knowledge, the generous loyalty bonus system in AAA, since this program began, the Gearbox talent has earned over $100 million in loyalty bonuses above and beyond traditional compensation. In the most recent pay period, Gearbox talent enjoyed news that four out of three having earned revenue exceeding the largest investment ever made by the company into a single game had officially become a profitable game and the t- talent at Gearbox that participate in the royalty bonus system has now earned their first royalty bonus on that profit. Additionally, a forecast update has given the talent at Gearbox the participants in the royalty bonus to set expectations for the coming quarters. Gearbox is a private company that does not issue forward-looking statements to the public. We do not practice transparency within our own family. But we do, sorry. We do practice transparency within our own family. Last year, former Gearbox lawyer Wade Kalender began entangled in an ugly set of lawsuits with the company. In one suit, he alleged that Pitcher had taken a $12 million bonus in 2016. When development started on Borderlands 3, the bonus did exist, according to two people with knowledge of what happened, but it came to the company 60%, not the 40% of profits that were meant to go employees. Since still yesterday's news, combined with the word of Pitcher, heavy bonus has upset a number of Gearbox employees. Some of them say they expect an exodus in the near future. 
those who have made financial plans based on the expectations set by the company's management may now find themselves in tough spots. Or they're welcome to quit. Or they're welcome to quit, apparently. Yep. <laughs> There's nothing better than when your boss looks at you and says, well, you're welcome to quit, instead of actually giving you a solution to the problem. Yep. Wow, that was a mouthful. Please go over to Kotaku to give Jason Schwartz the click. That was a very uh, interesting insight into what is happening at Gearbox. Yeah, um, it's ridiculous. Alex, what are, you, what are your thoughts on this? It's 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 ridiculous. This is definitely like um, I don't remember my dad's one of his favorite movies. I don't remember what it's called, but it's the movie where the I th- I think the main character wanted to buy a pool. Okay. He promised them a pool. I feel like this was a National Lampoon movie. Okay. And uh, he was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm, I'll get the family a pool." No, this was this, uh, whatever. But he goes to like, "Yeah, I'm, I'll buy a pool with the bonus check I'll get." And then the boss goes over like the day before he gets the check and goes, "Oh, you're not getting the check." Like this is oh, like. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Promise. I know. This, I know what you're talking about. Is this a married? That might be a married with children episode or something. I have no idea. But <laughs> that this sounds exactly like that, where they're like. Like a week before you're getting the check of the bonus, they're like, eh, it's not that much anymore. It's mm-hmm. like, what? Why didn't you tell me months before this was going to happen? <laughs> yeah, I know. I, 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 I can't remember the movie either, but I know what you're talking about. But yeah, it's, 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 it's crazy because, I mean, like, God, they, like all those people I were working so hard on these games, and then just because it was like, oh, the game was too expensive, so now you're not getting the money you, you, know, you're, you're owed. And it's like, oh, it's my fault that you didn't work the money right. Well, yeah. it, and again, this would be completely different if they were more transparent right before. But they, yeah, exactly. literally, they're telling them, do they give a full time frame? Uh, I don't think they gave a full time frame of. Bef- um, All I know is that oh. I saw that thing that says uh, allegedly Pitchford had taken 12 million bonus in 2016. <laughs> yeah, and there's three different people that said that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's probably true. I've heard rumors that Pitchford is a dick, and mm. I mean, I mean, we're getting little little tidbits here and there that yeah, he seems like a dick. I'm not saying him getting a bonus makes him a dick. That's not mm. the, the, the him looking at his employees. You know, he's supposed to be a leader, <laughs> and he goes, "You're welcome to quit." Well, then that's a uh, that's kind of a dick move. Uh, but I did want to tell everyone that listens to the show, if you wanted to vote with your wallet or something and not buy the next Borderlands game or the DLC or something, uh, that, yeah, they seem to be treating their people like crap. So there you go. Hopefully yeah. the uh, developers Fix maybe the voice a complaint. Yeah, maybe they voice a complaint. Maybe uh, they said they're getting advanced on their royalties, which doesn't really change anything because like they're gonna get that before anyways but hey maybe hopefully they they, uh, maybe they should riot like uh, what was it riots place <laughs> yeah riot like riot games yeah, yeah. <laughs> where they did a walkout i think it was yeah. blizzard and riot games i believe did like walkouts or something like that. yeah I, I might be missing that up a little bit but essentially they also voiced the complaints and things were fixed so hopefully yeah. things get fixed here um Hopefully they can spread the money, spread the wealth, spell the happiness a little bit more. Yeah, man, uh, we're to, in tough times. So everybody just needs to chill and just work. That's together. true. That's true. And this is bef- this was not really before, but this is before the crazy, crazy stuff happened. It seems. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so maybe they helped them in some way uh, before all that happened. Uh, but Alex, that is the news for this week. What are you gonna play today? Hmm. Right now. I'm gonna go play some Apex because it's getting a little late. We get, yeah, it is getting late. We have to play that event. Yes, and then um, tomorrow. It's for us. You might, you know what tomorrow is, man? Tomorrow is the eighth. Yeah. What, what comes out tomorrow, Elijah? What comes out tomorrow? Mm-hmm. We've been playing a lot of this, and it's something new. So we gotta see if there's any updates. I'll tell you. Oh, Call it's, of Duty. Call of Duty. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, season yeah, yeah, season it, three, it. Warzone. I did it, everyone. I did yeah, it. <laughs> he, he got it. <laughs> I got it in the end. Yeah, there. yeah. I was he, like, what? I, I got in my head because I was like, tomorrow's a Wednesday. Nothing comes out on a Wednesday. There's no yeah. game coming yeah. out. And I was like, is it a movie? And then I thought about movies. And then I started talking about <laughs> Onward because I just watched <laughs> that movie on Disney Plus. Good movie, and though. So you can see it's a good, great movie anyway. Yeah, yeah. Terribly sad. Jesus Christ. No, I cried, no, yeah, I think, sure. three separate times during that movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was tearing me apart. But it was really good. Uh, but I, you could tell I, my mind went on a trip there. Yeah, I was then, like, 
what am I thinking? And then, and then I like, got caught up. It's in like all I can and think of is like the whole the whole room just like froze. So like for example, I'm gonna refer, <laughs> reference back to Persona in the there very beginning go. where he was on his phone and he, everything just like yeah. freezes and he sees that yep. thing in the distance. That's how your mind mm-hmm. was. You're like, what was it? So you started. I, what th- do you think? Huh? What do you think about them grabbing masks and ripping them off their face violently? I'm not going to lie. I forgot that happens, and that kind of scared <laughs> me for a second. Because <laughs> I was like, because it's weird, because he starts tearing it off, and you can see, like, the anime blood or whatever, and I'm like, oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. It, 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 no matter how many times I see it, I go, oh, my God, he's about to do it. He's about to do it. And they grab and rip it off. And I'm like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. It looks satisfying. Yeah. Like as much as it hurts, they're like looking at him, like all like destroyed, and he's like, "Ow!" It definitely looks like a ah. Oh, don't do that, man. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm definitely excited to go back to that game though too. Uh, which but, one? Uh, Persona. I want to go back to oh, it, but Persona. we need to play okay, some Apex, go. Go. and tomorrow we're gonna play some season three of Warzone. Uh, a couple of, of course, we'll have a if Alex can get through a semi review of Persona. Yes, maybe I'm, I want to get I want to get ahead so we can talk about it. And by the time of next episode, we would have played Final Fantasy VII, so expect our impressions on that. Yes, it'll be a full Final Fantasy VII breakdown, and of course, we'll have a spoiler cast for that because we will for sure beat that since it's not as long as no, Persona yeah. Five Royal. <laughs> no, yeah, for sure. I'm gonna play um, through Final Fantasy VII. I don't know if I'm gonna if there's any collectibles or if I'm gonna 100 percent it, but I'm just gonna play through the story just so I get my feel of the story. Oh, uh, is that talking Final Fantasy VII? Yes, I don't. Th- think there's collectibles okay you sure there's not well because they're, they're side quests apparently so i don't know if there's a completion that's a good list. point there could be collectibles i have no idea i know there's i'm pretty sure there's not in the original game but yeah i'm not gonna pretend like i know i got you but that's it for this week thank you achievers for listening to that if you enjoyed this content you can of course go to patreon.com slash easy achievers you can give us the buck that gives you everything um an exclusive every month and that gives you uh, early access if you pay for that tier, of course. Uh, and it helps us out, keeps the mics on, the lights on, and Alex's dog's fed. Of course, you don't want to keep them unfed. Um, and if you do, I make sure they're not fed. Alex tries to sneak them treats. I don't let it happen. Yeah, man. Um, we I, are I, being quarantined right now, but I break, <laughs> I break it. <laughs> <laughs> Alex keeps the windows unlocked, so. <laughs> Shh, hey, man, don't tell S- him that. Silly, silly him. <laughs> All right, it. ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening head over uh to all of our other videos you can check out some other things we have uh the last month's uh exclusive up now if you want to go watch that and you will get of course this month's exclusive uh in the coming weeks. sometime thank you achieve us gotcha